what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest AirOS and it's been a long time that I have made a video on AirOS so this is the latest build the official latest build of AirOS 12.0 based on Android 12 of course and this is the gapps included build and the security patch here is January 5th 2022 the build date here is 28th January 2022 so yeah this is a fresh build right now we just released today and we have the AirOS logo up top in the about section and if you have no idea how to flash this particular ROM you can check out the card or the description to actually see the flashing guide. Right now let me show you in the system panel we do get a system updater and you can check for updates from here and yes time to time you will get updates on this particular ROM. Let me go back we have the gesture settings and there you get plethora of options in terms of gestures. We have the quickly open camera, the system navigation gestures. Here in the full screen gestures, we have the swipe to invoke assistant. So you can swipe up from these corners and that will bring you the Google assistant. Also, if you say, okay, Google. So for some reason with the latest build, it's not working, but I would say I have seen it working in the previous builds. So maybe they will fix it in the future updates. But as you can see, there is the okay Google option here and it is enabled right now. But still, if I say, okay, Google or hey, Google, it doesn't actually bring the Google Assistant window and you can swipe up to actually bring the Google Assistant but yes the voice trigger is not working here as of right now with this latest build of 28 January 2022. We have the left edge right edge sensitivity customization we have the gesture bar enabling or disabling option that is the spill bar right here yes you cannot change the size of the fill bar over here which may be a little bit annoying but as of right now that's how it is. We have the three button navigation as well but there is no two button navigation. Here we have the invert layout then we have the one handed mode and we have the press and hold power button for assistant again and we have the swipe to take screenshot and I have enabled that let me actually show you if you take a screenshot here like this we have the capture mode option we also get the edit option then the share option and stuff and the delete option as well here we have the toggle torch when the screen is off if you press the power button and press and hold on it i guess and we have the double press power button over here too and we have the prevent ringing then the advanced restart is also there so let me actually show you from the quick setting panel itself you can get into the power menu this is how it looks like and if you tap on restart you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here or you can just reboot the system here we also have the double tap to sleep and the playback control the volume wake etc let me go back we have the front camera settings here we get the sound effects you can enable the pop-up camera sound effects also we have the camera led customization or enabling or disabling option and if you go into the language and input we get the gboard as the default keyboard here and this is how the home screen looks like of Air OS. and yes i have changed the wallpaper this wallpaper i have been using from the wallp app i'll link it below too the Air OS is pretty simplistic and it doesn't have much things but yeah it has the very important customization which one may need like the double tap to sleep and stuff so those things are very important for some people and for them the ROS fits just perfectly yes it does not offer huge amount of customizations but this rom gives you the best stock android like experience now let me show you the stock launcher well if i go into the home screen settings let me show you this is the quick step launcher which is present by default but let me actually show you it does have right out of the box double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen that will make the phone sleep right now there is no always on display because i have disabled that let me just enable it from the settings then going to display settings if i go into the lock screen and enable this always show time and info and right now if i double tap as you can see this is how the always on display looks like you can double tap to wake actually the device and this is how the lock screen looks like and the fingerprint scanner you can notice the fingerprint scanner speed from right here as soon as i tap the fingerprint scanner it unlocks very fast and snappy and reliable experience over here with the fingerprint scanner no issues whatsoever that i have had as you can see it unlocks 100 percent of the time now on this quick step launcher to the left of the home screen we do get the google's discover page that should be working fine swiping up gets to the app drawer yes you can search for particular apps from right here and here if you swipe down on the home screen that will bring you the quick setting panel now this is how it looks like i'll show you the quick setting panel later on but let me show you the stock things by the way the wallpapers and styles is still here and this is how it looks like you can change the wallpapers from right here it has the stretchiness everywhere in the ui because it's android 12 of course we have the dark theme enabling option this is how the white theme looks like everything including the quick selling panel becomes white whenever you are using the light theme and we have the themed icons you can enable or disable it and if you go into the app grid we have up to 5x5 five five grid option now talking about the widgets yes the android 12 clock widgets and stuff all those things will be working fine like this and yeah it has the newer clock widgets and stuff and let me show you the calculator app too so that you can see 
yes as you can see this is the newer android 12 and they look pretty beautiful now let me show you the quick setting panel this is how you can bring it and it looks beautiful we have the brightness slider on top and we have the time then the date and the other information regarding the battery and stuff over there in the quick setting panel and i have added a couple of toggles but let me tell you in this particular rom some features are completely missing which might annoy you those are like the dc dimming feature dc dimming is very important for me at least but here you don't get that let me actually show you what's the problem with that once you like decrease the brightness if you're noticing in camera there is a lot of screen flickering so yeah this dimming is completely missing and that is kind of a bummer in my frank opinion in arrow os maybe they will add it in the future updates but as of right now this dimming is missing from this rom even in the quick setting panel toggles if you notice that there is no DC dimming option or there is no that bright daylight kind of option for the display which you will find in ROMs like Evolution X and here we have the flashlight, the auto rotate, then the battery saver, the dark theme and here with the screen recorder you can also get the device audio and microphone audio at the same time. Let me show you some more toggles like the do not disturb, the data saver and the hotspot, nearby shared, the nightlight also works fine here, no issues with that and I think this is the sound toggle, yes if you tap and hold on it this is how the volume panel looks like. We have the screenshot, the heads up and we have the device controls. So these are the toggles that I have added in the quick setting panel. Yes, they are plenty for daily usage, but I would say they are pretty minimal. Right now, let me show you the stock camera. This is the stock camera you get. This is the Gcam Go. And with this, the front camera and stuff, everything should be working fine. As you can see, the front camera is working great. No issues whatsoever. It pops out pretty fine and it is fairly fast, I would say. And taking pictures, it's fairly snappy. As you can see, the experience over here, it's fairly snappy. So yeah. It takes pictures pretty fast, no shutter lag or stuff like that. You just point on a subject and you just shoot the subject and yes, you get the picture. So I would say the pictures coming out with this Gcam Go is pretty fine. I would say it's a very shareable in social media and we have the video and stuff and you can shoot the videos. You can see how long for how long you can shoot the videos. There is also a translate feature so you can live translate some text if you want to. Then we also have the portrait mode. And if you go into the settings of this Gcam Go, you get the face enhanced mode, then the night mode. The storage option is also there for some reason, which is not really usable for Redmi K20 Pro. But yeah, that's how it is. You can also install the Unix version of the Gcam. This is the Unix version of the Gcam. And with that too, the front camera and stuff should be working fine. And I'll link these things below if you want this particular Gcam. And here, let me switch to the other lens. And as you can see, the ultra wide angle lens is working fine. A 2x telephoto zooming lens is also working fine. By the way, this is how the settings panel looks like. We get a searching option, then of course everything seems like pretty Android 12-ish. Right now, let me jump into the battery settings and this is how it looks like. Inside the battery settings, we don't get any charging cycle kind of information, but it has a few customizations now. Inside battery icon style, we have the status bar battery percentage inside the icon or next to the icon. You can choose it from right here. Also, you get the battery icon changing option. As you can see, right now, you can change this to big dotted circle or stuff like that or the big circle one. And if you set that, this is how it will look. So yeah, this is great that we are getting all these battery icon options in AeroOS right now. Earlier, I think these battery icon styles weren't there in AeroOS. And here inside battery usage, you can see the full battery usage from right here but I'll show you the echo battery data, but we have the thermal profiles as you can see. And from here, you can set these benchmark apps to these profiles and stuff. You can set games to gaming or dialer to dialer, camera to camera. So you do get the thermal profiles over here. Also, we have the battery manager and battery saver stuff. Right now, let me show you this echo battery app. With this, I have tested the battery. And here, as you can see, it shows eight hours and 36 minutes screen on time but mostly the device was in standby so this may not be accurate data but i would say you can get seven and seven and a half hours of screen on time over here if your battery's health is good so that should be pretty decent of a battery if i would say the device is almost two years old right now with the original battery screen on time should be decent over here and the battery drain while standby is not that huge here so if you're a heavy user you may need to charge the device twice a day but if you're a normal user, you may get away with charging the device only once a day. And here inside health, if you're noticing, I have about 87% health left of my original battery. And of course, talking about fast charging, fast charging is flawlessly working over here, no issues whatsoever. While using my 33 watt charger, I have seen that the milliamps almost goes above 3500. The fast charging is working perfectly fine. And this is how it looks like while charging the device. The animations looks just dope. 
Inside notifications, we have some app settings and stuff, then the bubbles and all the Android 12 things. We have the Saner heads up mode. Then if you scroll down more, we have the blink light and stuff, enhanced notification options. These things you get inside notifications. And in the sound settings, we have the media call, etc. volume controls. And if you scroll down more, we have the phone ringtone, etc. Then we have the dial pad tones, the screen locking sound, etc. controlling option. And we have the vibrate on connect, call waiting, disconnect and the screenshot sound disabling option too. And here inside the Dirac sound, we have the Mi Audio Dirac. You can set it to Youth Edition or stuff like that. And with this, the sound quality via the headphone jack sounds really, really amazing. And even with Bluetooth, the sound quality is great over here. And we have the sound presets and we also get the Hi-Fi audio option over here. So I would say the sound quality of this ROM is just amazing right out of the box. Inside display settings, we get the brightness level, the adaptive or auto brightness. Then we have the lock screen settings. Here we get the four small clock and stuff like that. Here we have the pocket detection mode too. We have the double tap to sleep on lock screen. Then if you go advanced, we have some ambient display features. You can enable those if you want to. And we have the screen timeout up to 30 minutes you can set. We have the dark theme. But once we enable the dark theme, let me tell you, there is no option for the pitch black over here yet. So as you can see, this dark theme looks great. It is. A little grayish dark I would say but yeah you can't really notice that much but since it's an AMOLED display there should have been the pitch black mode. Right now as you can see there is the font size, display size, the night light then the colors are set to boosted over here and we have the auto red screen then the screen saver, the double tap to wake. Also we get the status bar items from there you can enable the icons of the status bar like the headset, Bluetooth etc icons you can enable or disable from right here. Now inside security you still do not get any app lock or face unlock stuff like that. But which disappoints me is that if you go into the settings, there is no option to actually get the quick unlock feature. And of course, there is no FOD icon or FOD animation options yet. Talking about some other stuff like the DRM info shows as L1 over here. So this is based on Android 11 format. That's why you get L1 certification over here. So you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p here without any issues. Also, the safety net passes right out of the box here. So you can use banking apps like Google Pay or SBI card without any problems. And by the way, this is how the recent panel looks like. And we have the screenshot option then the clear all option. And if you go into the split screen mode, you can just tap on the icon Then you can go into the split screen mode from right here. And you can clear all the apps from just like this. Now talking about the daily driving performance, I have seen in terms of performance, this ROM is great. And I have seen no lags or stutters at all on ROS. And the overall performance of the UI or even while gaming, it should be a really amazing experience. And talking about performance here are the Android and Geekbench score of this particular ROM with a CPU stress test. So that pretty much wraps this video up about the ROS on the Redmi K20 Pro, the latest build of 28th January 2022. So again, I feel this is a very convenient ROM for a normal user, for a casual user who doesn't need a lot of customizations. Thank you so much for watching this video guys. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. Please share this video with your friends if you feel like. This is Tito from KDNTX signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye bye now.